Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm uh, gonna look at something a little bit different. We're gonna look at the, the value of a full-time MBA. So the other day I was on Reddit, came across this thread about is getting a full-time MBA actually worth it today? You know, um, something that didn't cross my mind when I went back to school full-time. So uh, I'll be running these numbers for the first time on my own personal scenario. And uh, I guess we'll find out, did I make a huge financial mistake as Reddit tends to believe or is this gonna come out as a positive return on investment for me? Um, let's hop over to the spreadsheets and let's find out. Hey everyone, so here's kind of a, a basic ROI template that I threw together recently, um, just to kind of run this quick analysis. So the first thing is pre-MBA salary, uh, your pre-MBA bonus percentage, internship salary, post-MBA salary, signing bonus. Um, and then annual bonuses thereafter. I created a handful of different scenarios, actually, investment banking, consulting, tech, and then just kind of a median post-MBA scenario. So the first one we'll do here is investment banking, and this is what I went into after my MBA. So, um, you know, I'll upload this template after, and you could run the numbers yourself if this is, uh, you know, if you're considering pursuing an MBA or something, you know, that you might be able to run a little bit of analysis in here and uh, help you come up with some rough idea here. Um, so pre-MBA, I was making right around $90,000 a year. Um, I don't know if I would say that was higher or lower than my classmates. Um, I think that's probably about average. I think there was people that made more than me and there's a lot of people that made less than me. It all just really kind of fluctuated and depended. And that's my, that was my base salary. Uh, if we look at my bonus, I think I had a 10% annual performance bonus. Um, I always had a pretty regular corporate America job. I worked in corporate finance at a Fortune 100 company. Um, so pretty basic compensation structure. I wasn't an investment banker. I wasn't a consultant, anything like that, or a software engineer. So obviously if you have some of those kind of roles, um, your competition may be higher and may not be a, a good idea. So for the internship, if you're going into investment banking, um, your internship pay is going to be $150,000 for the summer prorated. So um, they're going to pay you as if you're a full-time employee and they prorate it for the summer. Uh, post MBA salary, your first year out, you will be making 150,000 as an investment banker. That is street standard now. I think the only bank I know that still pays less than that, I believe, is um, Piper Sandler, and they might have changed after they actually merged. That was uh, Piper Jaffrey was paying 125. Piper Sandler may pay 150 now. Um, post MBA signing bonus, so this ranges by bank. Um, bulge brackets are 60,000. Um, I think some of the elite boutiques are closer to 100, so it's really just going to depend on your outcomes. Um, of what bank you go to, but we'll use 60,000 as it's kind of street standard. Um, post MBA bonus, so your first year, your stub bonus is going to be 30 to 50 thousand dollars, depending on the bank. We'll go ahead, we'll drop 40 grand in there. Um, and then now the real thing is, what's your bonus going to be after your first full year of employment with the bank? It, it varies widely. You're looking at anywhere from probably 50 percent to 150 percent of your base pay. I'm going to be conservative here, and we're going to go, you're going to get a hundred thousand dollar bonus. Um, and then the next year, you should actually get more than that. We'll just go 150. Um, the idea is every year in banking, your total compensation should increase. So I have this all linked up here and um, you can see, so lost salary, this is calculating how much salary I lost for going back to school. So we have the pre-MBA salary of 90,000 and it was only five months of the year that I lost it. I went back to school in August, quit my job in July. Some people will quit earlier. Um, so I really only lost five months worth of salary there. And then obviously you can lose a full year amount here and actually have your salary growing by 3%, just like a basic inflation. Um, I mean, you could remove that from both scenarios, but uh, just include it because by the time you graduate business school, obviously you'd be making more than before. And this assumes no promotions along the way and just a base 3% increase, which may or may not be correct. You know, you may be able to get up to 120,000 a little bit earlier, but then you may plateau in your career. Um, but I just kind of kept it simple for, for the sake of this exercise. Bonus, I mean, realistically, you actually don't lose anything for 2018 because you should have got your bonus paid out. Um, I mean, my bonus was paid out in like March of 18. So it's really, I lose that first bonus in 19. So um, you can actually delete that. Tuition and fees. This is assuming you're full burden. Um, you're paying the full cost of business school, all $170,000 here. Um, that's a lot. That's how much student debt I graduated with because I decided to have a great time and finance everything. Um, you know, there's a lot of scholarship money out there. If you have a good GMAT, I was a sub 700 GMAT, went to a top 20 program, um, still got a job in investment banking. So, um, you don't have to have a 750 and go to Harvard to get into investment banking out of business school. That's a big myth that the internet loves to 
to spout. Um, if you don't get into NYU or Cornell, you're not going to be an investment banker. That's not true. Um, but you do have to be a little bit more selective with your school and you have to be smart about it. But so I was full burden. And then this internship length, 12 weeks, um, that's just so you can prorate the, the salary here. Um, most of the internships will run kind of like late May through early August or June through August. So you'll get about 12 weeks of uh, internship time there. And then um, signing bonus, obviously. So in my bank paid it out in 2019, actually, um, after I signed my return offer. So obviously um, that benefited me from a tax perspective, but um, you can see like I actually made more in business school than I almost would have made. I mean, if you exclude that bonus, but I guess you have to include that, you know, 102,000 would have been my earnings. If I stayed at my job, I made 95,000. Um, the difference is obviously $85,000 in tuition. I mean, I just split the tuition evenly here, um, but you get the general just here, but you can see, um, and this is assuming in banking that, you know, you're not getting the, oh, I didn't lock the cell here, um, but I guess we can have the salary grow still. So we'll, we'll lock that. Let me just repaste that. Um, if you go into investment banking post business school and you do it for 10 years, uh, yeah, you come out ahead hundred um, percent, nine times out of 10, I'd say, uh, Unless if you were in private equity before, you were in investment banking before, and for whatever reason your firm didn't need you to go back, or you were a software engineer making $600,000 a year because you had Tesla options at $10 a share or something, um, you're coming out ahead. So obviously 10 years in investment banking is a grind. Um, not many people are going to make it that long. And your salary will actually grow quicker. Usually um, you'll be 150 for your first full year, then they'll bump you to 175. And then your third year as an associate, you'll be at 200. And then from there, if you get the VP promote, I think it goes like 250. Um, and then your bonus actually just shoots up along with this. So, I mean, investment banking, there's going to be a positive ROI without a doubt. Um, if we look at consulting, I've already kind of filled out some of these numbers. Um, and these are just kind of general numbers from what I've gathered from classmates. I don't know what their signing bonuses was. We have like a portal that shows kind of pay across industries and whatnot. And it it ranged from like 35,000 up to 70,000. So I just kind of went in the middle there, took 50,000, assuming if you're going to um, BCG, Bain, McKinsey, or you're going to Deloitte, you're probably gonna get about a $50,000 signing bonus. And I actually know they pay, um, Deloitte will pay like your second year business school. So um, that's something to consider as well. But this is also assuming a full freight um, tuition cost. And you'll see, you know, you still come out positive here. And you could probably make the argument that these numbers for the consulting pay are light. Um, I'm not sure how it scales. I know it starts at 165 at most of the consulting firms. Um, I'm gonna guess once you go from senior consultant to manager, you probably get a bump to 200 in base. Um, and this is actually only um, a seven year DCF as opposed to this one being a 10 year. So um, you're gonna come out ahead here. Um, and this is MPV, not ROI, but you will come out ahead here. Um, and this is assuming 7% discount rate, um, which I mean, sure, you could move it up or down, um, whatever you want, but it's all kind of the same. Now we're gonna look at tech. Um, I'm assuming you're going to Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Facebook. And before you say, oh, you can only get into those firms if you go to M7 school, that's not true. Look at Foster. Foster sends like 70% of their class, um, University of Washington Foster School of Business sends like 70% of their class into tech to Microsoft and Amazon. Um, and a handful of students going to Google and whatnot. Um, so these outcomes aren't only for kids going to M7s. Um, it's for people at probably most, I would say top 20 to 25 schools are gonna have pretty good outcomes. Um, and we could discuss for days the difference between the different tiers of business schools and what it really means, but that's a video for another day. You can see here, um, the difference here is you're gonna have equity. So a lot of times you're gonna start with, what's going on here? Oh, I took the equity and divided by four. Yeah, so a lot of times you'll get a post, post MBA equity grant, um, just depending on the firm from anywhere from like 90 to 150,000 to 200,000. Um, it really just kind of depends on the individual, your other offers. This is the one part that it looks like most tech firms are willing to negotiate on when you join. Um, 
but I think a lot of my classmates were kind of in this ballpark of $150,000 of equity. It'll have the four-year vesting schedule, obviously. Um, I've assumed it vests equally over four. I know Amazon is backloaded. Google is evenly across. So it just kind of depends on the firm. Not all tech firms are going to give equity. I know, um, pretty sure like Cisco actually has one of the higher base salaries. I think it's like 165 or 170, but they don't give equity. Um, and same with Oracle. Oracle has really high base salaries and no bonus and no um, equity. So it's it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, but if you go to kind of one of the big FANG companies, you, you should get a pretty decent equity. And then you'll have top top off equity every year, the best over four years, assuming you're performing well, and you'll get a annual bonus. So if we look at that, I mean, you're still coming out ahead here. Um, going into tech. Now you could argue these are the three biggest fields that everyone wants to go into and they're the hardest to get into. Um, sure. That's that's not wrong. It probably is one of the harder fields to go into. Um, tech consulting and investment banking. But still I think a majority of students end up in those fields. And then the last thing I did here was just kind of a median. Um, so for this I actually just went to um, US World News. I looked up what's kind of the 20th ranked school. You scroll down here, UNC Kino Flagler and Foster. Um, and then I pulled up UNC's little post MBA employment guide. Um, and you can see like 18% going to tech with the 130 salary, consulting 16%, financial services 19%. Um, so, I mean, these outcomes even at a top 20 program, I mean, they're sending what 20, they're sending two thirds of the students almost, you know, over half the students into those three fields. So, I mean, if you come in and you're a competent individual, and UNC is huge on real estate too, um, even though the compensation is lower, they um, are one of the top real estate programs by a number of students they send. Um, and then they're also really big healthcare. I know they have a big center for healthcare there. Um, and then also I pulled up a Stanford one and we could run the numbers on the the median here and you'll see the median at like at Stanford obviously the number one program it is going to be um, higher right so their median across is 150 mean 152 I'm sure if you look at their placements um, probably a lot 18% going to consulting 33% going into finance most of it going to be private equity um, so that's gonna be the big difference between a, an M7 and a lower rank school is your private equity placements but with that being said, you're not getting into private equity if you don't have buy-side experience before business school. And if you have buy-side experience before business school, you'll probably get into a better school than a top 20. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so here's another scenario. We're going to say you're going full freight at UNC. 130000 is what their tuition was. Um, and you're just getting the average job with the average signing bonus. And we're going to see how it comes out. And we're going to say before you're making 85. And once again, um, you still have a positive MPV at a 7% discount rate. So that's this is an MPV positive project. You could take it on. You could take two years off work, go enjoy life, travel the world, and switch careers, and you're going to come out ahead of where you were, assuming you know, you're know you an average student making 85,000, 10% bonus if you're just an average corporate American employee. And I think, obviously, if we, you know, if we expanded this out and made it a 10-year MPV instead of just a... Um, seven year, you know, all of a sudden now you're getting a positive MPV. So it really just depends on how you want to slice everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, there it is. Getting a MBA today is still valuable if you approach it the correct way. Um, if you go to a full-time top 20 MBA program and you have the ability to get in there, even if you're paying full freight, um, if you add, if you land the average job out of the 20th program, in 10 years time, you're going to be $100,000 better. Now the question is, is it worth it? I don't know. That's a good question. And do you want to pay full freight for this? That's another question that, um, you know, I can't answer for you, but uh, something to think about. And if you get a 730, 740 on the GMAT, you can probably go to UNC with a 50% scholarship. And you know what I mean? This brings this down to 65,000. 65, um, you know, it almost doubles NPV. You decide you want to do tech instead or <clears throat> consulting you come out at 165 you know what i mean there you go you're half a million dollars better in 10 years um it's definitely still worth it in my opinion to go get a full-time mba if that if you want to pursue a career in corporate america um, and you're not a software developer 
because software engineers today seem to make incredible compensation right out of undergrad. And I think you'd be crazy to give up some of that equity um, at such a young age. Um, but yeah, there it is. I hope you found this useful. I know it's a little bit different than the normal valuation videos I did. I'm going to be doing a handful more just kind of discussing MBAs and different career paths and finance things that I've gone through. Um, so hope you found this useful. Um, hope new people come to the channel found it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, let me know. If you think this was pointless and you don't want to see it, let me know as well. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks so much.